to sell. for him. Then I should tell you, do not trust the word of doctor. Trust me. God said, I should tell you, trust me. Say, why are you shaking in your faith? <laughs> Say, is there any power bigger than my own? He said, I should tell you, trust me. And because I trust him, I, I, I am standing on this thing that happened in the Bible, at the book of John 5. Uh, yes. uh, a man at the pool of Bethesda. Hallelujah. The man, do you know that he fell in the school of faith? Yes. Listen, he fell in the school of faith. Yes. When God got to Jesus Christ, got to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. He said, I have no man. She no man. Is he asking for no man? When somebody that created all men is here. Hallelujah. But because it was his day, that day, nothing, even his faithless cannot deny him his, his, his testimony. So I don't care whether you trust God or do not trust God. All I know is that I am talking about the power of God. So by that power right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I take over now, I take away that doctor report and I give you your report. They report them. You are healing right now. Somebody did not believe that he's healed. I saw an altar and they put something like your clothes and it's burning and as it's burning that is why you are having the pain today the name of my father is consuming fire you don't know consuming fire I made the mind of that fire on that altar I release you right now and I command that healing hey Oh, I want to go to the word of God. Why is God doing that? This, this evil mark. Please, we get me and raise your oil. This evil mark is the race now. It's the race now. It's the race now. now. You did not believe. I say it's the race. Right now in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. And God said, I should tell somebody. That person that used to give you food in the dream. Anytime he comes back again. That person will eat the food of death. Yeah. And I want to tell you something. Anytime you have that type of dream, please get up. Don't wait for pastor. Because pastor may be far. Jesus Christ is closer to you. Put your hands and locate a wall. W A R and gone. Put it and begin to be back. <laughs> Speak to you. Do you know why? You have Jesus in you. I told somebody that said you should eat in the dream. The Hallelujah. I said the food you now is not even okay. Because you have Jesus in you. You have Father, we have Holy Spirit. And you are the fourth one. So maybe when Father eats out of it, son take out of it. Holy Spirit take out of it. The remaining man, one more. How many how much will you eat out of it? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to worship God and say thank you, Jesus. 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 Holy Spirit, we depend on you, not ourselves alone. Of our own, we can do anything. Nothing in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible said the entrance of his world give her lights and understand it to the same simple. He set forth his world, his world healing and deliver from destruction. Hallelujah. But the virtue of this word of God right now, I thought, okay, it's not a 
the name of Jesus Christ is an arrow that can never miss its target. And the word of God is going on right now. Please just don't listen, don't wait for me. And they say, come out, come out. The word of God has the ability to push out everything that needs to be pushed out and to bring anything. Hallelujah. So what we are going to do right now? Listen attentively. Hallelujah. When I was once a children teacher, I used to say, listen, listen. Pay close attention. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you in Jesus' name. I want you to open your Bible to the book of Judges. The book of Judges. Six. Twenty-four. I just want to start from that one because of our time. Um, this is a case of Gideon when the children of Israel they were under the bondage and God raised a man called Gideon for him. A man called Gideon for them. This topic, please, I want you to listen very well. Hallelujah. In fact, we had taught it before. We spent almost one week. Hallelujah. But this place, we just had a minute. And I believe that God is going to do something in your life with this type of topic in Jesus' name. The altar must be destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise God. 24. Then Gideon built an altar there unto the Lord. And he called it Jehovah Shalom. Unto this day it is yet of opera of the Abbey's rites. And it came to pass that the same night that the Lord said unto him, Take that father young bullock, even the second bullock of seven years old, so throw down the altar of the bar that thy father had cut down, cut down the grove that is by his, and build an altar unto the Lord her God upon the top of the rock, in order of place, and take the second bullock, offer a burnt sacrifice on the wood of the grove, which thou shalt cut it down. Then Gideon took ten men of his servants, and did as the Lord had said unto him, and so it was. Because he feared his father's household and the men of the city that he could not do it by day, that they did it by night. Everyone say it's right by night. Right by Hallelujah. Night. Because it's the right, it's the night that controls the day. Praise the Lord. And when the men of the city arose early in the morning, behold, the altar of was cut down, and the grove was cut down. That, that was it. And the second bullock was over upon the altar that was built. And they said to one another, Who have done this thing? Done this. And when they equal and asked, they said, Gideon, the son of Joash, has done this. That the men of the city said unto Joash, Bring out that son, that he may die, because he had cast down the altar of Baal. And because he has called down the crowd that was it, and Joash said unto all that stood by him, stood against him, Will ye plead for Baal? Will ye save him? He that will plead for him, let him be put to death. When is this yet money, if it be a God, let him plead for himself, because one had cast down his altar. May the Lord blood bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. An altar is a place of sacrifice. When an altar is built, you are creating a covenant relationship with a God. Hallelujah. And an altar, when an altar is built, altar may be built for right or wrong. But let me tell you something. Everybody born on earth is born from an altar. And until you rise up against the altar, nothing happens in your life. Hallelujah. Every family is born into an altar. Praise the Lord. And most times when you see some family, you see them walking according. According their life is going one way. That is what happened. That is what has been projected. For, the, for that person. An altar can be, can be raised for God, for good or bad. But every altar works according to purpose of the builder. And let me tell you something. Every altar working against your life right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, we destroy it right now, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hear me, my brother. Every destiny is connected to altar, most especially we that are born in Africa. Hallelujah. Let's open our Bible to the book of Genesis 12. Verse 1. Sweet Holy Spirit. Have your way. I take authority over spirit of confusion. In the life of this man. I cast out the spirit right now in Jesus' name. We shall begin to do right thing at the right time. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. 
Now the Lord has said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, and for thy kingdom, and for thy... Okay, let's start from uh, 11, 27, then we connect ourselves to 12. Now these are the generation of terror. We got Abraham, now I'm um, all manna, all manna, all manna, then 12, 1. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody begets you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And your life is attached to a person. That is why most life are going according to the rule and regulation of the father's house. There are different types of altar. There are generational altar. Generational altar, the altar that have been existing before you are born. Hallelujah. That is why most people, after like Abraham, Abraham now, God had to ask him to get out of that place because without him getting out of the altar of his father's house, Abraham carried the destiny of human being, human race. So for him to start a new thing, he had to be separated from that altar so that new thing can start in his life. That is why God said, Abraham, get out. Until he get out of that altar, nothing happened in his life. God is, God, somebody is getting out of the altar of his father's house in the mighty name of Israel. Do you know that many people are in Abuja right now? Ah, sorry. <laughs> in Lagos. Hallelujah, I am from Abuja. God bless you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Many people are in Lagos right now. Their destiny is on the altar in a woman shop, in their village, they are here empty. They struggle and labor. Let me tell you something. Then your uncle that has PhD and went to school because he want to become somebody. But upon the PhD and everything, the man is still smelling and sinking. Do you know why? An author is responsible for that. It's not that that man did not know how to, how, did not know how to succeed. But something had him cutting. Oh, but I want to tell you something. By your presence here today, there is no altar that will stand against you. I cross you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Generational altar. In the altar that will be existing before you are born. Generational altar. In the altar that is older than your age. Generational altar is the altar that truncates and destroys destiny. Generational altar is the one that battles and shatters people's destiny. And everybody in that family will begin to sing the same song. God told me something. It no matter the destiny, what you carry, it shall born into that family before that person can succeed. He makes the grace and power of God. That is why, let me, let me take one revelation from Jesus, from God. When a child is born into a wrong family, and the child will be crying, wow, one, a one, a one, a one, I am in the wrong place. I am in the wrong place. I am in the wrong place. And people will be like, hey, he's baby boy, yo. His baby girl, that boy, that child is crying because they can see what we cannot see. Hallelujah. When a child is born, a child is born with his destiny. Ma, please just give me a paper. Thank you, sir. Anything. And you will come. Oh. Uh huh. Oshay. Sam, come here. When a child is born, every child is born with hand closed like this. Yeah. Through of us. Yeah. You know what? Take. There is a letter in the hands of that child to reach to the whole world. When a man is dead, you can't see a man that, that will hold the hand, he will do like this. He has, it has finished. When a man, a child is coming, a letter is put in, in the hands and say, come, take this letter. Read it to somebody. It may not be my own letter, maybe somebody's letter. As far as God is concerned, somebody is you. you there is no non-entity. There is no useless child. Somebody, your destiny is important to somebody. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. You, you are a perfume, the emperor of somebody's destiny. In fact, before that person can succeed, until he sees you, nothing happens. So the letter is put in the hand and say, when you get to the world, oh, go and read this so, so, so. Let me tell you something. That's why all the people that you are coming across when you are alive, they have been recorded in the record of your life when you are coming. You are not meeting them by mistake. It has been preordained by God. Hey, thank you, Jesus. 
Hallelujah. You understand? Don't go. Because you will read your own destiny. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I don't care what is happening there because you are standing before me now. I am going with you to your father's house. And I command them to release you. And I raise you as a voice right now. Every padlock that's padlock the voice of people there. I come take the, I have the key on David. I open the key, them out, them, them, Nana. I command you to be released, Anna. And you do this, man. Go and fulfill your destiny. Do you know why? I am standing by the auction of a woman. A woman gave back to you. I put my hands in my womb. But the level and the pain of a woman. And the level of Jesus Christ upon me. And upon you, Anna. I say you will fulfill destiny. Every error is cancelled in Jesus' name. And because you say, my that is the same thing will happen to you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Ma, let me tell you something. Stand up. Don't dare the ministry of a woman. Because there are weapons in our hand. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. There are weapons in our hand. God told me something. I'm going to just you. A woman told me, please, a woman, the head, please don't do it to your mother-in-law. And the mother-in-law told the woman, told the wife told the mother-in-law that the woman, she's a witch, all manner of thing, and is connected the only child from the mother. And they called me, and as I was praying, God told me, you know what I'm going to do? Invoke, invoke the labor of Jesus Christ. I said, how? God told me, Jesus Christ, labor on the cross of Calvary for us. And I said, okay. He said, now, ask the mother to tell me the day of the birth of that child. And he told me, I said, and I invoke that day, the angel that are present on the day of the birth of that child. Wow. And I called that child. I said, mama, please tell me what happened that time. And he told me, hey, when it happened, I went to a sister. I said, huh? And you did this, huh? And I said, oh, if you see the way I said, huh? And I now said, by the, I called the angel of God that was present on that day. Call me here right now. And I now called the pain of Jesus Christ. John is right now. And I said, what is the name of that child?